What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and this is Justified City Primeval Episode 7, The Smoking Gun. So I was close. Uh, when he handed the gun to Maureen, I was like, oh, wait a minute, maybe they are going to go the route of her being the one. And then it turns out all three of them are dirty and helping Clement out. They didn't really go into full details to why, just the idea that they're all in the black book, I guess, and so they want to keep it safe. I, I don't really understand why they wouldn't want to take down the guy that is trying to use it against them. <laughs> you know, they, that's... I guess they think if he does get brought in, if he does get arrested, then he would just use that black book and be like, Oh, well, I'm exposing all of you and you're all done. That's the only thing I can think of. But it does seem weird that this guy who essentially holds all of their careers in his hand, they're helping him get away. <laughs> to me, that just feels like you're essentially... You know, oh, this this guy that's constantly keeping us from doing our jobs, crap, we gotta help him out. <laughs> you know, it's it seems a little counterintuitive, and also the fact that it seems like he's been getting, as Raylan said, a little too lucky for a while, even before he got his hands on the black book. So I kind of wondered if maybe there's gonna be something else that we didn't know about. Maybe it didn't have anything to do with the black book. Maybe there's just a cop that wants to help him for whatever reason. So the fact that it is tied to the Black Book, I still have to wonder, how did he get so lucky in the past then? <laughs> you know, again, how did he get lucky enough to just shoot the judge, of all people, and get his Black Book? It seemed, it all seems a little too coincidental. And maybe, for the point of the story, it is. You know, he, he is pretty lucky, but after he got the Black Book, that's when things started getting even luckier for him. So, but the one thing that I will say that kept me... I guess from being a little disappointed by this reveal, is the other reveal on top of it that I was not expecting at all, that Brill, of all people, turns out to be the one that tries to help Raylan take him in. And I think his reasoning is sound, based on what we know about Brill. Obviously we've not seen him in a few episodes, but yeah, he, he is kind of an asshole. He is that cop that clearly does whatever he can to get the job done. But as he points out, he only does it if he knows for sure. You know, he has pr planted some evidence. He has done some dirty stuff. But he only did it to put away guys that he knew was guilty. Doing it, putting this random guy who's completely innocent, putting him behind bars for something that he, everybody knows Clement did, it's not something he's willing to do. I'm, I'm fine with that. You know, he's a dirty cop, but he's a dirty cop with a code. <laughs> it's not un uncommon. Some people, they are willing to break the law by their own rules, but somebody asks them to break it in a different way, they don't want to do that because it goes against what they're trying to do. He's trying to put bad guys away. He's trying to put criminals behind bars. No matter how he does it, <laughs> that is his goal. So to put an innocent man behind bars in place of a criminal, that's not what he's trying to do. And I, I like the fact that they had that moment. you know, And especially Brill of all of them. I figured maybe it would be Wendell because he seemed a little bit less gung-ho about all of it, even when he didn't even say anything, actually. I kind of expected maybe Raylan would turn to him and say something when they were watching the interview or the interrogation being done, but he hasn't said anything <laughs> since it was revealed. So, I, but I figured Wendell would be the one because he seemed the most, I guess, unsure about what they're doing. He seemed very guilty looking. Maureen, I mean, she just went from total... Like, seemed like a really nice person, seemed like a, a good cop, love what she does. And then in this episode, all of a sudden, she's like, you don't know what you're talking about. We're fine here, Marshall. Like, she, complete character change for her. So I do hope we get a little bit more clarification on that. Because, I mean, yeah, she obviously she was swearing a whole lot. And she does seem a bit more of a hard ass. But she didn't seem dirty at all. So I, I just, I would like to know a little bit more about why these cops turn dirty like what what they did that gets them to the point where they're willing to help this psychopath go free just because they don't want their their names to be exposed in the black book um, as far as Carolyn it was kind of interesting seeing her whole backstory with sweetie basically how he raised her as a, as a father figure for her. Um, it was a nice moment you know, seeing her as a little girl and he's talking about the bar I will say I'm glad they didn't, because in my mind, I came up with a dark joke, because he said, yeah, this place is going to be cool. In my mind, I'm like, yeah, this place is going to be hot. 
if they had done that, man, that would have taken me completely out of the... It would have been hilarious. I would have died laughing, because I love dark humor. But, God, that would have taken me out of the show so much. I would have been like, you writers, you're insane, man. Uh, but, no, that seeing that little backstory, and then also whenever Clement does decide he's going to basically threaten her, you know, chokes her out, hearing the black backstory, the black story, the back story of how she was a little kid and how Sweetie helped her stand up for herself. I thought that was nice. And it shows that when you push her to a certain point, she's willing to do what it takes to essentially hurt the people that are trying to hurt her. Um, so I, I feel like now the story of her going a little bit further outside of the law, I think now it feels a little bit more natural. Again, with the, everything that happened in the one episode, um, it's episode five, Everything that happened in there, it felt like it was kind of forced. Like, oh, really? Just because she's had a bit of a rough day, she didn't get the judge thing, Jamal is giving her problems, that's why she's suddenly like, oh, I'm going to turn to the dark side now to get what I want. This feels a lot more, not only has she tried to bring Clement down, not only has Sweetie, her father figure, now died, now Clement has come in and physically assaulted her. That's her breaking point. That is her point of, you know what? Fine, I'm going to go do this my own way. I'm going to go talk to the Albanians, and I'm going to get them to kill them. That's how I'm going to do it. And I feel like that's a lot more understandable, why she's willing to go to those lengths after everything that happened. Um, so I'm, I'm glad they at least gave her some stakes that were higher than just her ex giving her trouble and being passed over for the judgeship. Um, but as far as the Albanians are concerned, it's a little weird that they decide to take Raylan too. I'm not sure if we're going to get a reasoning for that. Maybe just because he stepped in to stop them from killing Clement the first time. Like, they just see him as a problem. And since he's... I mean, obviously, if they had just tried to take Clement and not Raylan, obviously he would have been like, I'm sorry, I can't let you do that. So, I, I think either way it would have ended with him going with the Albanians. But it seems weird that they show up and they're like, yeah, both of you, I want you to get in here. It seems a little odd, but... I mean, it sets up for a very exciting finale where Raylan now has to try to get away from the Albanians while also, I'm assuming, trying to keep them from killing Clement. And this seems like another situation where it feels like Clement dying would almost be a bad ending for Raylan because he's been trying to do this so by the book, you know? So if it happens where the Albanians kill him or if he causes Clement to pull his gun and have to shoot him, it almost feels like, well... That's what you're trying to avoid, though, right? So, I don't know. I don't know if that would be the, the proper ending for all of this. But, yeah, I think that's about all for this one. So, finale coming up. Let's see how this all wraps up. So, I'll see you guys there in a second. And now, episode 8, the finale, the question. Eh, it was it was okay, I guess. Um, I gotta admit, there's a lot of it that I'm not really sure how I feel about yet. First of all, the Albanian stuff, I know how I feel about that. That was just stupid. Um, I mean, definitely the dumbest thing in this episode. Because, yeah, I mean, you, you needed a reason why him, like, Clement getting trapped inside the locker or the safe room or whatever, you needed a reason for that not to be the end. You needed it to be Clement versus Raylan. That's how it was supposed to go down. That's how we needed to go down. So that's how, yeah, we, we need a reason for him to get out of there. So instead of, I don't know, <laughs> I, I guess there's no real good reason to get him out of there. There's there's no reason that's not stupid unless I Raylan decides, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and tell the cops about it because I feel bad. And then the cops get there and then one of the cops turns out to be working for Clement this whole time, you know, inside source or whatever. And it's not anything to do with the black book. That would be something that I think would be a little bit more interesting and kind of surprising in a way. But instead, no, they're like, let's just have the Albanians be total idiots for a second. Let's have one of them decide, yeah, let's send the cripple guy on his own to go shoot <laughs> this guy who's clearly capable in a fight. What? <laughs> what kind of idiocy is that? And then he shows up at their thing, even though it's shown that they have cameras, they have a lot of weapons... And he takes them all down? Like that? What? <laughs> so that that whole thing was just really dumb for me. Stuff that 
it, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. I'm not sure if it's good, not sure if it's bad. First of all, so Maureen is shown to be seemingly the only dirty cop that's in the judge's book. That's what they're trying to, to claim in this episode. I have a few problems with that. First of all, she's the only one. Also, the fact that like they showed Brill and Wendell were willing to go along with her plan, but then Brill decided, no, I'm not for this. Why didn't they say anything before then? If she's the only one with her name in the black book, then why? Why is she the only one that's basically, or why, why is everybody helping her? Why is nobody stepping up and being like, why are you doing this? Do they all just know she's in the black book or what? Like, it, was, it was just so weird to me that they implied in the last episode that all three of them were working together to conspire to get Clement off. And yet, it's only her? And on top of that, we don't even really find out what happens. Like, she just basically puts on this facade of like, yeah, screw you, you guys got nothing. And she acts all confident and cocky. And that's the last we see of her, is her talking to an internals affair officer. So did she get arrested? Did did they fire her? Like, what happened? And again, no real explanation other than just there. There's some her name's in the book for something she did. And that's sort of it. On top of all of that, this all ends with Raylan shooting Clement. And granted, they did build this up a little bit with the conversation that Raylan had with Raymond, where Raymond was talking about the one guy, you know, reaching for something under the bar and he shoots him, and it was just like a, a corkscrew or whatever. So they, they did build up this idea, and honestly, when he started to reach for sh something and Raylan shot him, I'm like, oh, okay, so they're going to do that with Raylan now? And what's weird about it to me is I... I see what they did there, but I also don't feel like they executed it very well. Because I feel like that premise... Because the guy said, Ray Raymond said, that he shot the guy, and now he sleeps like a baby every night. Similarly, we see Raylan, the Albanians lock up Clement, and it should be over. You know, like, he got the job done, the guy is out of the picture, he's gonna be dead, no problems, Right? But he can't sleep because he knows it's not right. What just happened was not right. And yet, they decide to try to do that same story again. You know, it's kind of showing he can't live with himself letting the guy just die. Letting the Albanians take care of it. So you would think, okay, so he's not the same as Raymond. He's not the same type of person. He can't just call it there. He has to make sure it's done correctly. And then at the end of it all, he shoots him. He was reaching for a cassette tape, not for a gun. So it was a bad shooting. And I guess he quits because of it. Doesn't get in any trouble, seemingly. We don't know if they covered it up. We don't know if, you know, she, she defended or Carolyn defended him. And basically said, yeah, you know, I, I saw it or something along those lines. And yeah, it looked like he was reaching for a gun. None of that. That we don't know if they planted a gun. We don't know anything about what happened other than he shot and killed Clement. And then six weeks later, everything seems fine, but he decides to quit. Not sure if it's to go be more of a father for Willa, or not sure if it's because he feels guilty about what happened and he decides I can't be a marshal anymore o over that. I don't know. <laughs> and that's where I'm on the fence about it, because I'm not really sure what they're trying to show here. If it's he decided to quit to be a father for Willa... That's not really where the show was leading me towards. Because, <laughs> first of all, Willa herself, unfortunately, not... I mean, even here at the end, she's still not good. <laughs> she's not a good enough character. She wasn't written well enough. The acting, the direction for her was not good enough for me to get me... To, uh, for it to get me to care about her. So, for Raylan to quit his job to be a parent for her, I don't feel that connection at all. I don't feel that story because I never connected to Willa's character. Because she wasn't well written and she wasn't well acted. So, if that's what they're going for, I will say I'm, I'm very disappointed. Because I feel like that, it's something that could have been built up more. She was hardly in it though. She disappeared after like, what, episode 3? She was sent back home? So, not very long was she in this series. And yet it was all building up to her? And they did have one moment where he texted her. He's like, hey, I miss you. And she's like, don't want to talk. Okay, thanks, bye. I'm just like, okay, yeah, be a little brat. 
and yet he's going to quit his whole job for her? Seriously? So, I, I'm, again, I'm on the fence because it could be he couldn't live with what he did. He couldn't continue being a marshal because of what he did to Clement and how it re he saw what happened with Raymond and he's like, I'm not that person though. I can't just go on sleeping like a baby. I have to suffer some sort of consequences for it. So I'm just done. If that's what they're going for, okay, I can see it. It's not great, but I can see it. it it's okay. But anyway, with all that being said, some of the good stuff in this. First of all, I will say, I mean, I do think they built up the the tension pretty well. I I do think that Raylan and Clement had good back and forth in this episode. And it's something that I do wish we had been building a bit more for this showdown. Instead of a, he comes, like, Clement shows up to kill Carolyn, and then Raylan's there. And then he just, like, talks to him. He's like, well, I'm going to be hitting the road, so, oh, by the way. And then reaches for a cassette tape, which then Raylan mistakes for a gun and shoots him. Like, I, I feel like that was a little anticlimactic, but everything building up to it, I did I did really like. I feel like they did a good job um, of getting me invested in building the tension. Uh, I, I was really excited to see it all go down, which is why I was left a little disappointed <laughs> in how they handled it. Um, also, one other thing before I talk about some more good stuff. The old man... <laughs> In, in the Albanian's, like, what, retirement home, nursing home. What was that? What was that scene? Because, I, I don't know, he, so Clement's taking out all the Albanians, all of a sudden this old man just picks up the gun and then goes in to the room where Clement is and points it at him and is, like, shaken, and then Clement just walks up, puts his gun away, takes the gun, and then pats him on the shoulder and says, thank you, and then walks out. What was that? <laughs> Was there a point to any of that? Because it felt very pointless. Like, I thought maybe the old man was going to get a shot off or something, or maybe Clement was going to, like, startle and shoot the old man. I don't I don't know. I just, I'm not really sure what that scene was, because nothing happened from it, as far as I can tell. So, I don't know. <laughs> it was really bizarre. But, so moving on from all of this, though, it really does feel like, the ending here, it feels a bit more like it's maybe a pause. You know, maybe a pause for Raylan, a pause for what he's doing. We never saw him truly stop being a marshal at any point. You know, there were talks about him maybe being done with it, maybe, you know, teaching, what, what was it? What was it? Because um, Winona wanted him to teach ballistics or something I, I don't remember he he was gonna teach though essentially and move to to florida with her and that's one of the original things in justified that's what they kept talking about happening uh but it never really did so i don't know if maybe this is their way of like okay so we're hitting pause he is gonna stop being a marshal he is gonna quit for now but the story's not done yet because we see boyd and honestly, it's the only thing that really saved this episode for me, because if that hadn't happened, if none of this final scene with Boyd happened, I probably would have been pretty disappointed by this ending. I probably would have been just sitting here going, really, this is what it's all building to? Him just retiring because of his daughter? Or maybe because he feels bad? Like, that's it? <laughs> this whole show was was brought to us to give us more Raylan just to show that he retires after it, all of this. Really? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm, I'm glad that they brought this final scene in, though, because it makes me feel more like this is the end of this chapter. You know, this everything that happened in Detroit, all of the stuff that he saw here, it was more building towards him feeling like, okay, you know what? I'm done. I can't keep doing this. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I've reached that point in my life where I feel like I need to be done just for Boyd to show up and then get out of prison and now it's it's pulling him back into it again like that that for me it makes this season feel, or the series feel a little bit more like a okay guys we're bringing it back to set up for something else and if that's what they're going for I kind of like it but if this final thing if it ends up not coming back at all if this turns out to just be like a bit of a oh 
Boyd's out again. Uh, what's he going to do? Is he going to go? If it's more of like a up in the air type of ending where we're not sure is Raylan going to be sucked back into it by Boyd or is he going to just stay with his daughter? If that's the ending of everything, if that's the last time we see Raylan, that's very disappointing. <laughs> so it really just depends on do we get to see more Raylan after this or is this the last episode? It's the last episode. This was not a great ending for him. This was not a good ending for the character, for the, the series. It's not... I almost would like to believe that it ended after Justified. Like, there was no Justified City Primeval. <laughs> like, they, that's going to be my headcanon, is that there was nothing happened after what we saw in Justified. But if this does lead to now Boyd's out there, and now Raylan's going to be tracking him down, that will be interesting. So I don't... I would assume it's not going to be called Justified City Primeval, but I could see them doing like a Justified colon another title. <laughs> Something like that to essentially show... So Detroit, that was City Primeval because it was crazy. Now we're going to be moving on to a new story with, with Boyd and whatever he's trying to do. Because it's funny, we, we see him in the prison, we see him talking to those people again and you know spreading the word and all of that. So it, it's funny how we see that again. <laughs> But seemingly, he's still living that life of crime. And I always... I, I don't know. It, it It's one of those things that could make some people dislike this show a bit more. Because I could see how some people would like the... The... What's, what's the word? Magnanimous? Is that the right word? Kind of the mysterious, the uncertain ending for Boyd in the original show. Where, yeah, it seems like he's he's going through the same steps again. You know, he's gone back to prison, now he's he's preaching again, but is this really him trying to be a better person, or is it just him putting on a facade? And if it is him trying to be a better person, is that the end of it, or is he going to be pulled back into the lifestyle of a criminal again? So this ending definitely gives it a little bit more certainty. Like, we know for sure, yeah, he's, he's definitely still a criminal, he's definitely still loving the, the lifestyle of just living outside the law and all that. So, I, I, I personally like it, just because it promises more Justified in the future, more Raylan versus Boyd, which is a fun showdown to see. But I can understand how some people might be like, really this again? Because yeah, I mean Justified does end on a pretty solid note for Boyd and Raylan, in my opinion. So, yeah, I think that's about all for this episode. So my thoughts on the series as a whole, it was okay. You know, the overall. It was fine. There were good moments to it. There were exciting moments to it. I feel like it was a fun story for Raylan to be involved in. But I do feel like if you just look at the series on its own without the idea of there being a possible second season or a possible another spinoff series of Justified, if you look at it just on its own as a revival series and that's it, we're never getting another season after this, it was pretty poor. And I, I think a lot of that just comes down to the original Justified ended on such a solid note where we got to see everybody and kind of where everybody ended up after everything was said and done and after everything that happened in Harlan County. So you end on that really solid note and now you bring him back and you show Raylan now that he's lived a, a bit of a good life and now we see what he what he's doing in Detroit and all of that. And it feels almost like... Not a regression, but it feels like we're we're just sort of telling a different story to show this is why he's going to retire now. And I, I don't really feel like this story was strong enough. The characters that they brought in, a couple of them were interesting, but most of them were not interesting enough for me to truly get invested and be like, oh yes, I, I can't wait to see where this all ends. And oh, he's going to retire now, man. I mean, I understand because he's been through so much. It, it didn't really feel like it was building up to this enough for me and there are also I mean just how many loose ends at the end of all of this again with Maureen we still don't know what's happening with her we still don't really know why she turned in the in the first place uh, we don't really know why Clement was so lucky before he got the black book you know seemingly Maureen was helping him after that fact but we don't even know how involved was she what was she communicating with him was she letting him know what the police were doing or was she just making things happen that were screwing up the the case the entire time? Like we still don't really know all of the details there. It feels like they left a lot of that out. 
we don't even, I mean, Sandy, what happened to her? Well, the last time we saw her, she was in the airport, and now she's just gone. And obviously the Albanians aren't coming after her anymore, but we don't even get a resolution for her story. She just helps Raylan find Clement, and then she's done. So, yeah, it's just, overall, it, it was fine for what it was. It was definitely not anything close to the original, but in my opinion, if it doesn't carry on after this, I will look back on this series and try to forget it because it was just not really that great of a a sequel series, if you will. So that that's kind of where I am. I, I know that may have been a little roundabout way of saying I liked it if it's leading to more, <laughs> and if it doesn't lead to more, then I didn't really like it. But that's how I feel about it. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these final two episodes and as this on the series as a whole? Let me know. We could talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for possibly future Justified stuff. But I will see you guys when I see you. Peace out.